We are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win Show. And welcome back to another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. I hope you're having a great day so far. It's episode 80 of our podcast today, which is really fun. It is. I cannot believe that we've done 80 episodes. And you know what? Heather's done. You did. I did a year's worth. Like another 100 prior to that, right? I think 50. Maybe 50 or 60. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So what we wanted to talk to you about today um, on this topic of why we decided to do this podcast. and how we've been doing it for 80 episodes and just giving you a little bit of, um, I guess our feedback and what we've learned from, from the 80 weeks, because it's been about 80 weeks, right? Maybe a little bit longer than that. We've had a couple of weeks where we didn't, we might've taken off off just on vacation and stuff, but for the most part, we've been very, very consistent with it. And, um, we've been really happy with the results. So if you've ever thought about creating a podcast or you're like, ah, what do I, what would I need to do? How would I do that? Um, could I do it with my husband or wife or kids or whatever? I mean, I've seen all different types of podcasts um, on all different types of pro- uh, um, subjects and with different people and they can all work out. And so, yeah. So as we, as we tell our story today and um, share some some laughs about the mistakes that we've made along the way. I want, really want you to be thinking about whether this is something that you've ever considered doing. So whether it be a Facebook Live or an actual podcast or even blogging, um, just be thinking about where this could possibly fit for you. And what we'd really like to do as well is share some of the tips and tricks that we've learned, not just from the mistakes we've made, which are plenty, but also from getting involved in other podcasting networks and learning from others who have been extremely successful in this world. Um, we'll share we'll share some of those tips as well. So, so I think that the number one thing is, and, and, I, and I know some of you that watch this on Facebook, you're like, well, is this a podcast or is this just a Facebook Live that we're doing? So Heather, tell them a little bit of how we've worked this out and kind of only had to do, had to, we really leveraged this Facebook live and podcast together because we kind of use them one in the same. So tell them how we do that. Yeah. Well, one thing we know is that by doing Facebook lives, um, some people (laughs) will see why you're laughing. Well, it just forces you to have to do it. Like you're on live. You don't have a chance to like rehearse or do anything. So this is our podcast and we do a little bit of editing afterwards for the podcast. Yeah. For the podcast. Yeah. So how did we get on Facebook Live? Well, we spent a lot of money. We invested, I'll say invested, not spent. We invested a lot of money in working with a media coach. And one of the things he said is you guys have to learn how to get on video. And that was about the last thing that I ever wanted to do. Like just, I really hated being on video. Not me. You were fine. You were always (laughs) fine. So part of the reason that he said, okay, Heather, you're going to stop your pod, your solo cast and you're going to pull Paul in and you guys are going to do it together in part because Paul's like, I'll go on camera. I'm fine. Um, so two years ago, almost two years ago now yeah. to the day, uh, Paul and I started this together as part of our media training. So so he really wanted us to get better, get more comfortable and really get better at providing content, getting concise with our message, coming up with a format for how we share things, um, telling stories on video and having so, a hook in the beginning, have a hook, which yeah. we, we, and an opinion, which is what we yeah. And then, and that was really one of the harder things for me because I kept saying to him, well, as a coach, I'm not an advisor. I don't tell people what to do. I respect that they have their answers within. So I'm more of someone who asks questions and he's like, well, you can't do that on a podcast. You get podcast. You have to have an opinion. So yeah, he really pushed us outside of our, outside of my comfort zone for sure in, you know, you got to get out there with an opinion immediately. Say, state your opinion, tell people why they have to do this and what they're not doing. Um, so we're still, I'm still working on that piece of it. So the opinion um, today is on, on why, po- yeah, on why podcast. podcast, our opinion is, you know what, just start one. If you really have always thought about having one or doing something like this, just do it. And I'll tell you what, 
Let me give you an example of of exactly what happened. Uh, maybe our second or third episode. Um, and I don't know if it was a Facebook Live. We were we were still recording at that time. We weren't doing the Facebook Lives yet. And so this is what it looked like. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I'm out of here. And so I had my meltdown. <laughs> And I told Heather that I would never, ever do one of these again because I couldn't take it. I quit. quit. I totally quit. You quit the show a couple of times in the beginning. And and everybody will have their breakdown. You didn't necessarily have the outburst that I had, but you've had many breakdowns throughout this. And so you're going to go through your ups and downs, but just like anything, you grow and you learn what works and what doesn't work. Um, And one of the things that I think saved me, especially in the beginning, when thinking about the long-term vision of what this podcast really was about, one of the things we really stand for personally and professionally is growth, right? In such a competitive and fast-changing business environment, the only way to stay competitive is to evolve, right? Is to continue to grow personally and professionally. And it's something that we got really committed to back in 2001 when we first had exposure to coaching. So we wanted to share that message. And my commitment that I made when I first started my podcast is that I would do at least 100 episodes. So that so I was not allowed to quit all those times that I wanted to. And it really took away my ability to quit. I made a decision, right? When you decide, you kill off all the alternatives, right? So I did not have an option to quit because I committed. And I'll tell you one other thing that has been really helpful we partnered with Gulf Shore Business Magazine. And so Gulf Shore Business is a a partner of ours in this production and they promote it to to their list, to their readership. And it it provided them with an additional method of reaching their readers, right? A digital method. So that was another thing that really, really helped me stay strong with the commitment for doing this podcast was that I had this partnership. So there was someone else who was who was relying on us for this. And that's a great opportunity for you as well, because one thing we know for certain is that most podcasts don't make it because people don't stick with it. And there are many, many, many podcast shows out there that did not become famous for like five years because you suck when you first start, yeah, right? So yeah. we had to really be willing to suck and even still do today, right? Be willing to to know that years later, we'll look back and say, oh, look how much we've grown. Yeah, because <laughs> even when people tell you, and you will you may be listening to this um, this episode right now and thinking, yeah, you know what? I'm just on the verge of starting my own, my own podcast or maybe doing Facebook Lives. Um, I'm ready to do it. And you go and do it, but you, you know, you have to have the consistency to do it, but you got to realize that unless you're trained, you're going to kind of suck. And I know I totally suck. How about our first, our very first video podcast we did, you guys, this was so awesome. You can actually go back and see it. I think we even posted it. Yeah. Yeah. it's It's on YouTube. Paul's face was only half in the camera. And we didn't know that's how new we were. So his face is like over here. He's talking like this through the entire <laughs> podcast. I can't even do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we so so here's the one thing that we did. We didn't wait to have everything perfect, as you can tell for those of us, for those of you who saw some of our earlier podcasts, we did not put all the pieces in place and get to perfection because. Part of the whole, you know, um, experience of doing a podcast is learning from your mistakes. So I would say that the very first tip I would have for you, if you're thinking about starting, whether it be a Facebook Live or a podcast, is to come up with whatever your long-term strategy is and make a commitment for a certain number of episodes where you won't quit. Because I trust trust me when I say, and when Paul says, there are times where it's going to feel really uncomfortable, and you're going to want to quit, and you cannot buy into your stories about that. So so make a commitment, have a long-term objective. You know, what is it that you stand for? What um, what problem are you solving, right? What are you helping people do? So as I said, Paul and I are really about personal and professional growth and helping people shortcut their path to success. So everything that we bring is for the purpose of helping people. And, and you never know which episode is going to talk to which person. Right. And one of the benefits that we've gotten from this is that we have people who are connecting with us from all over the globe 
Um, and a lot of it is coming from catching our podcast, whether it be on Facebook Live. Paul repurposes this by putting it up on our YouTube channel as well. Um, we now have 187 videos on our YouTube channel. And two and a half years ago, I think we had one video and it was of our cat, <laughs> which was yeah. maybe not the greatest representation of our brand. Um, so, so we've been able to use this show on multiple platforms, put it on YouTube. And then it's also, um, our platform that we use is Spreaker and that is a podcast. What do you even call it? I don't even know. What you it's call just it. a podcast hosting Host. yeah, okay. service, but there's plenty of other ones out there. And there's a lot more people that, you know, just search YouTube on, if you want to start podcasting, there's definitely a lot of information. Podcast was one they recommended yeah. last week. Yeah. I mean, they change all the time. So depending on when you're listening to this. So the other thing is, is that we chose to do this on a Monday, like not like, and not like the best day to do it on, I would think coming off of a lot of weekends, but I'll tell you what, doing it on a Monday makes you kind of think about it on Sunday thinking, well, maybe I, if, if you're having a couple of drinks, you're like, well, maybe I won't have that extra one. And, um, but it, it kind of helps, at least it helps me to keep in check a little bit. Um, and but I know, but I know, you know, for me that, you know, doing this, it's the other thing is having somebody that you, that you're doing the podcast with. So as, with, as a, a partner, it makes it easy. I can't imagine doing this on my own. And I know a lot of people and there's tons of people that do, but a lot of it is interviewing people. So there's always that interaction. I think it's pretty, for, for us, it's, it actually works out well because, um, because we don't have to have uh, somebody on as a guest and interview. We started off that way. And actually we have a guest coming today that we're going to interview mm -hmm. for maybe next week or the following podcast that we put out. But um, if you're doing it by yourself, you're going to, if you're going to host it yourself, um, you're, you may want to do interview style unless you can just roll it off and, and just do it on your own. And if you can, that's, that's really awesome because yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> you've got to be somebody that can just, can really understand your topic and understands what people want to hear and and do the planning and, and strategy around you know that topic, making sure you have your opinions, making sure that you're concise in what you're saying and all that. So so the other thing that that I just recently learned about, there's a technology out there um, that is called Keyword Magic Tool. I hope I got that right. I'll put it in the show notes um, with a link so that you guys can check it out. So one of the most valuable things that you can do to get searched, right? Like, so as I said, Paul takes this and he puts it up on our YouTube channel while YouTube has such an amazing um, searchability that, you know, instead of spending a fortune on SEO, getting your website found, you can produce videos. And when you tag them with the right keywords, they become searchable. So um, this keyword magic tool that I've just learned about, it's its through a company called SEM, I think is the name of it. And, and so here's the key though. You know, when you start typing in Google and it auto-populates, or if you're typing a question in YouTube and it starts to auto-populate, what you're seeing is what the number one, number two, number three search words are mm -hmm. around the words that you're typing in. Well, you don't want to use those because those are highly, highly competitive. And that's what everyone is using um, who has a huge budget. But what you want to do is you use one of these keyword search tools. You find out the questions that people are asking and you go much more specific into a niche within your topic. So as an example, when we did our keyword search tool today on podcasting, the very first search term that came up is what is a podcast? And there were tens of thousands of hits on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, we scrolled way, way, way down. And the term why podcast what, had about 170. So what does that mean? It means that it's something that people are still very interested in and they're searching, but it doesn't have the kind of competition that those in the tens of thousands do. Okay. Right. So, so when you're doing your, when you're coming up with your topics, when you use a keyword search tool around your topic and you get into those, and it's probably better to be somewhere between like 10 and 100 than it is to be maybe at 170, but still you can potentially get found because there's still a lot of people searching on that particular keyword phrase, Got right? It. Yeah. So consider doing that as you're thinking about the content and how you're going to title the content and how you're going to tag the content and, uh, and see what you can make of that.
So one of my friends from high school is on with us on the Facebook Live. Carrie, Carrie, I think you would actually do great on podcasting. You, hey, you just do it on Bruce Springsteen. Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. She's like one of the biggest fans ever. Um, but she's asks, how long do we research our topic? So Heather was just talking about doing the keyword uh, research, just finding out what like a good subject topic would be to discuss. And then once we're pretty, we're, we pretty much wing it a lot of times. We sit down maybe so 10 minutes early and, and write down what we want to talk we about. We don't talk to each other. Yeah. We don't spend a whole lot of time talking to each other about what we're going to do in preparation. But to be fair, the topics that we're speaking on, we've been speaking on it with clients for years. So we've done a lot of research and training over the years um, because it's been that, you know, we we work in business uh, and in leadership. So, so the answer is for the podcast itself, I would say probably about 15 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on the podcast. Um, and usually we're talking over breakfast or something that's pretty informal. Um, it includes searching keywords and it also includes pulling some articles uh, and or going back to a book where we read about a particular topic and just refreshing our memories on what we read. Um, but I'd say overall, not a lot. Yeah, of time. not a lot of time. We usually yeah. just play off each other in a lot of cases. So that's what's nice about having a partner host with you, co-host. Um, a lot of times. You know, you can as you, if you've watched these before, or listened to them. You've heard Heather pretty much leads it, and then I just kind of pop in here and there. And it's kind of nice to have that dynamic with each other. Um, and then every now and then, when we're working together, one of us will say something that the other was not at all prepared for, and then you're like, uh, "Well, I don't even know where to go from here. Why did you just say that?" <laughs> well, and that's that's the challenge with doing. Uh, that's the challenge with being a face having Facebook Live. So, so again, let me tell you how we do this Facebook Live and really leverage this. So, of course, right now we're on Facebook Live and we are recording this and broadcasting it to you. And then what happens at when the episode is over and uh, we hit the done button, it allows us to be able to download this video. And so then we take this video and. I use the audio from this because we have our microphones and our whole setup with our microphones so that we get better sound. And I don't use the video. I used to use the video that was from Facebook, but because it's really grainy and not very high resolution, um, I now have our GoPro, which is up on top of this webcam and it's recording us like in 4K. So really high resolution. And then I just strip the audio and put the video together with it. I know that may sound complex to some people. I use a program called Camtasia, and it's actually very easy to use if you spend a little time watching a couple tutorials and you have some patience. Um, but then just editing it up, and it's not that difficult to edit it up. It just takes a little bit of time. So, And by the way, we um, the video then goes to our podcast producer. Yep. So this is the other thing, too. I get stressed out when Paul starts talking about all the different components and the sound and the double video and the editing. Please don't let that stop you because there are people out there. You can go to upwork.com. It's U-P-W-O-R-K, upwork.com. Mm -hmm. And find someone who is who specializes on the back end of this podcasting. You can find people from all over the world that you can hire and they'll have star ratings based on you know other people who have worked with them. Don't let the technology stop you. The only thing I would say, the only thing that's important in producing a podcast um, is the audio being clear, like having clear audio. And I can tell you that even though we have a little, what do you even call that? A sound bar? Yeah, it's a sound board. <laughs> See, don't let the technology stop you. We have a soundboard, and I wouldn't have the first clue how to work it. And I'm not even convinced that we're working it right because, <laughs> no. because I've got a client in the AV industry who every now and then is like, Heather, um, who's doing your audio? So we, yeah, we but like he works with better. the Rolling Stones and stuff. I he mean, come yeah, on. To he's, be fair, he's like, a he's a little pro. picky when it comes yeah. to, well, and he should be. Yeah. Um, but, the, but having quality audio is the most important thing about a podcast. Absolutely. And the reality is even on your cell phone, I mean, I'm going to tell a funny story on me. When I was first doing this podcast by myself before Paul joined in, I would record my podcast in my walk-in closet and close the door because it was carpeted and it was, it, it was secluded. And so you didn't get the reverberation and I would record it on my cell phone. 
at times because our cell phone recorders are actually pretty yeah, darn good, really good these days. So again, when it comes to technology, as long as you have a good, you know, if you can find a super small room, like a closet, I don't even care if it's a walk-in, if it has a door and you can close yourself and in carpet. and carpet. And um, all the clothes, that that's all that just difference. buffers it from the echoing. Yeah, yeah. that helps. So um, yeah, now you feel kind of like an idiot sitting on your closet floor <laughs> doing a podcast at least I did um but when I listen to it after the fact I'm like wow that sound quality is actually pretty darn good yeah. so um you can hire people to do the back end for you and I think too that there are a lot of people who are just waiting for the right time like oh, I have to think about you know too much you know too much on how many different episodes and I have to come up with all these episodes before I get started. I want you to think about it. If you've been thinking about this or talking about this for any length of time, what is it that's really, really holding you back? Because the one complaint that I've heard from podcasters, the only one is once they get going is I wish I would have started earlier because think about this, you know, I, I wish we would have started earlier, but it, we at least we started when we did, right? Right. Um, and so if you if you think about this timeline of five years, I know that sounds so stressful. Like, oh my gosh, I've got to do this for five years before people start listening. Hey, that's not the end of the world because we don't really want people to be listening to our early ones, <laughs> right? Because they're you might turn a lot of people off. So we're so sorry to all of you people on Facebook who find us and listen and have had to suffer through some of our early ones, but. Um, yeah, but you know, and we learned actually, we learned that this weekend, um, Heather and I have been talking about doing a, a personal vlog. So not a blog where it's written, it's a vlog, which is a video, um, just log of your, what you're doing. And so we came up with the idea of, um, what we call do Naples. So we did our first vlog yesterday and we <laughs> which actually you did a really good job putting together I, I couldn't I, you know what I, this is why i really want whoever's thinking about doing uh, you know starting a podcast or a vlog or whatever it is you really just need to start it because i knew as i was recording you know i brought our gopro with us on our trip to the movie theater so we went to silver spot you know that really nice movie theater and we recorded in the car. We, I did a couple different shots. I This weekend, I watched a bunch of videos on how to vlog. And like, I watched some of the experts, some of the, and I've, and I've been watching a lot of them lately. And you learn so much if you watch like how they shoot things and the different shots that they use and, and the way they blend music in there and stuff, you really start to learn if you're not just subconsciously listening to them. If you're consciously listening and watching and seeing what they're doing throughout the vlog, you really start to understand that there's kind of a method to their madness and it's, and it's really interesting what they do and it's art, you know, it really is art. And so we started recording and, and we did our trip to Silver Spot and, um, as that and the kind whole of concept our, behind yeah. do Naples, we, first of all, it was born officially on Friday, yeah. right? We talked about it. Look, went on GoDaddy. So this is how this is how fast you can get going. Went on GoDaddy, looked up a couple of different websites that would work. Do Naples was open. We bought it for like five five dollars yeah. and ninety nine cents or whatever it was. And um and filmed our first one Saturday when we went out, but like screwed it up so entirely that we're like, yeah, we can't really use that one. We were on slow mo and like we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. Sunday tried again, and now it's produced. So it's not going to be launched live until we have at least 10 episodes in the can. So this is another tip for you guys. When you first start a vlog or a podcast or anything else, get 10 of them recorded first. So when you post on um, YouTube, as an example, you post it as private, right? You don't yeah. make it public at first because you want to launch them consistently. And YouTube actually pays attention to you when you launch five episodes in a week. So if you do a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you do five per week, then the amount of time you spend doesn't matter. But if you can get consistency, YouTube recognizes that. And after four months time, you will get a bump. I learned this from Nate Woodbury. And by the way, if you want to learn about YouTube and learn about how to be successful on YouTube, go to Nate Woodbury's channel because he's got some great content out there. And this blog that 
we shot and then I edited last night and, and finished up editing this morning, which took probably, I would say about two and a half, three hours total for me to do. Now, remember, this is like our first vlog and all I'm doing is just kind of using a little bit of the skills that I have from using Camtasia, the editing software and what I've learned on YouTube. And I have to say, I'm I'm actually really proud of the way it turns out. I, I was, I was kind of blown away. I'm like, this is so awesome. Like we made going to the movies kind of like a, a little movie, you know, it was yeah, like our like own little movie show. within a movie. It was fun. And it, and, and I think and it turned way, out really cool. The movie that we saw, neither one of us liked at all. Yeah. And, and we still had a good time. So there you have it. Yeah. I think that's the funny part of, of going to the movie. Normally you're going there and you're going to see the movie that you really like, and you're, and you're going to be happy when you're leaving. And we're like, Ugh. walking out of that movie theater. <laughs> we're both like, really? <laughs> we won't tell you which movie we'll no, save it. No. So when you watch the vlog, when Make we release it on Facebook. Yeah. So we'll keep you posted. That one's called do Naples. And we're going to start getting those out there probably within the next two to three weeks. But we figured Look, we want to. We we came up with this idea. We're we're out all the time, experiencing different sites and restaurants and hotels and everything around the Naples area. So why not share it with other people? Well, so again, just so, whatever yeah. your idea is, you know, pick something that is fun and interesting for you and that you think would serve a purpose for others, right? Yeah, totally. And you know, so so our idea of the of the do Naples was the, just that. You know, we live down here. We're going to restaurants. We're going to all of the top 10 things to see and, you know, th- and, and we're out all the time. So why don't we turn this into something that can be fun and interesting and we can um, just put it out there for value for people and, and just have some fun with it. So I, I'm really, I was really surprised how well it turned, how well the video turned out, but also how kind of easy it was. Yes. And, oh, and, and the big takeaway was that not only as we were recording this vlog, same thing with the podcast, but as we were recording this vlog and then, you know, just figuring out the different shots, but then editing it down, I started to realize just in that three hours of editing, I'm like, ah, I know how to do this so much better now. Like the next one we do is always going to get better. And so they will always continue to continue to build on each other because just like with this podcast, how you just get a little bit better every time in increments. And I think that's what's so cool about it is you just have to realize that your first ones are not going to be that good. And it's okay. And and, it's and even fine. though like right now I'm thinking, ah, mine kind of turned out okay. It's not great. I know it's not great, but it turned out okay. But I know when I look back on it in a year, I'll go, God, that thing sucks so bad. <laughs> you yeah, know? we will for sure. So you just have because to look for the bright side. It with, that's how you do it with yeah. everything. And that means growth, right? Yeah, totally. So when you're able to look back at something that you did a while ago and it sucks, that's really good because it means that you continuously grew in the process. Yeah. All right. Well, we were talking today about podcasting and why podcast and uh, again, if you have been thinking, if you have an idea in your head about a great podcast or something that you want to share from some aspect of your world or something that you really want to learn about is another great area to be thinking about taking on as a podcast topic, because whatever it is that you're teaching and sharing, you will learn at a completely different level. So I'm really interested in watching your space and seeing what you do. And if you have a podcast that you're thinking about starting or that you're ready to commit to starting, I say just just get out there, get started, and uh, and do what needs to be done. There's so many resources. Oh, by the way, a book that I have not read yet, caveat here is I haven't read yet, but I just learned about it last weekend, um, is by someone who I absolutely know, John Lee Dumas, um, who does the show Entrepreneurs on Fire. He is madly, madly successful in this area. He wrote a book called Podcast Launch, and that was recommended to me over the weekend when I was at the National Speakers Association podcast meeting. Um, so if if you want just a little bit of extra incentive in what to do uh, in starting your podcast, Go to Amazon, look up John Lee Dumas, and he's got a podcast starter out there as well. And also just hop on YouTube and search how to start a podcast and you can learn so much just on a weekend. Just don't get stuck there because you don't need to know everything. Just know enough to be dangerous and get going. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to our podcast yet, please go on iTunes and search on Evolve to Win and hit the subscribe button and then you'll it'll be sent to you regularly. Or on Google Play, you can do the same thing or your favorite podcast um, app. 
So again, search Evolve to Win. Please subscribe. And then if uh, if you prefer to see us on video, just go to our YouTube channel and please subscribe there. I just had Paul um, take a look. As I said, two and a half years ago, we had one video and it was of our cats. We now have 187. So um, it's it's something that we are really committed to continue building and continue to add value. Um, but we we would love it if you subscribe to that and you'll you will get uh, all the videos that we do. Sometimes they're podcasts and sometimes they're other stuff. So hey, well, thank you for joining us for another Evolve to Win show. We really appreciate you watching, listening. And if you like this topic and episode, please share it with someone. If you know someone who really needs to start a podcast or somebody who maybe you want to partner with, just share it with them. Have an awesome day. Have a great day. Bye.